AG Bill Barr now announcing the federal government will resume capital punishment. First time since 2003, Barr directing prison officials to schedule the executions of five death row inmates. This is not common, especially at the federal level. Jonathan yes. Morris, Fox News contributor, nice to see you. Thank you, Bill. Looking good. <laughs> Life's all right, huh? Yeah, big changes in my life, I, but all good. I know that. Let's get back to that in a moment yep. here. What, what do you think about this decision? When you look at life well, and the laws of the country. Just to be very clear, this is, as you mentioned, this is not very common. And I believe as of last week, there were 63 um, inmates on uh, death row. And so we're not talking about huge numbers. And so the question is, why is this being done? I think what the Democrats are going to do here, very simply, is tr try to win the moral high ground on every single issue. On this issue, they're going to say that is evil. I think the Republicans have a responsibility to step up and say, give reasons why, from, also from a moral perspective, not just a political perspective, why they think this is important for the country. Maybe, maybe they can say these 63 uh, people on death row right now um, present an imminent threat to our country. Explain it. I might not believe it, but explain well, you it. Think about the families too or the victims. 2003 was the last one going yep. back 13 years. Bill Barr said this. Under administrations of both parties, the Department of Justice has sought the death penalty against the worst criminals. The Justice Department upholds the rule of law. And we owe it to the victims and their families to carry forward the sentence imposed by yep. our justice system. Hey, I would, I would agree that it's absolutely ridiculous to have a law, um, in this case death penalty, and then not enforce it. Um, another question is whether the law should be there in the first place. But the idea that we're going to spend so much money on these prisoners to keep them on death row, which is more expensive than other forms of imprisonment, and then never carry it out, I think the system is hypocritical. You're talking about the moral high ground, right? Yep. What, what do you mean by that in well, terms of characterizing just, in a political yeah, sense? Yeah, watch, watch the debates coming, coming up um, and the ones that we have just saw a few weeks ago. All of these presidential candidates are saying, yes, the economy is good. Donald Trump, uh, they don't like to talk about it, but they recognize the economy is good. They recognize that the people in the United States of America are happy about that, also happy about the safety of the country. But they're going to say, we are going in such a bad direction. This is the Democrats, what they're doing, what they're saying is, in every one of these big issues for our countries, the Republicans are evil and we are good. Well, and things are not it, that simple. Yeah, and when, when yeah. it comes to the border, we've got this new poll, treatment yeah. of migrants detained at the border. You know, 60% of Americans are concerned about it. You can understand why. We For are sure. a compassionate nation. Yeah. We would like to take care of as many people as possible. Yeah. But there are restrictions within the system. Yeah, let me, let me give you an example of the moral high ground that the Democrats are taking that I don't think is true. Basically, they're saying we are for the illegal immigrants. We are for immigrants. But they're refusing to make changes in the system that would actually get rid of this second-class citizenship, which is basically what it is in the United States right now. We're saying you cannot come into this country. We're going, we're going to leave a porous border. We're, once you get in here, you can't get a job, but we're going to give you a job. It's just not going to be as well paid as others. It is a hypocritical system. It's bad for the United States of America, and it's bad also for these good people who are trying to come and just make a living. You know, well, I think about you, I think your, your past life, your former life, just a few months. You were pastor of a church in the Bronx. Yeah. This and, is where I saw all, all this. And at that close. parish, you had immigrants from all over the world that you served there. Yeah. And how, did, how did they feel about the way this you know, issue is going? It's, it's incredible how they recognize how dangerous the system is right now also for them. Dangerous for their families. So they know that they can get over across the border. But they know that the, once they get over here, they're going to have to live as second-class citizens forever. That is not good. That is not the moral high ground. The moral high ground would be something like Ellis Island, where people, they, didn't, they weren't legal when they arrived to Ellis Island. But there was a system in place where they could be vetted, and through a legal system of immigration, these people could find a good life. Oh, the idea that they can come over and the Democrats are doing them a great service, that's wrong. How's your life now? How are things A lot going? of change, but I feel such freedom for those who don't know. Uh, about six months ago, I asked for a leave of absence uh, from the priesthood, and then I made my final decision and requested from uh, Pope uh, Francis uh, to uh, dispensation wow. from those right, duties, I, I, and I'm I so wanna happy. I want to say, are you adjusting? And my, my guess is yes. We should talk about that over a beer. <laughs> okay, <How about> <laughs> we, we shall on that. The other thing is that you're, you're living in New York for two weeks, and you're also living in Akron, Ohio, for two yep. weeks. And your perspective when you're in middle America oh. is so much different than it is oh, my gosh. in the city. Just 
describe that. Going out to coffee with my brother and his friends, and here I, I've lived in New York for a long time, and New York affects you. You know, and I take out my phone and I'm showing them the tweets from Donald Trump, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, can you believe he said that? And all these guys are saying, ah, yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't care. The fact is what we want is what he's doing. And it's been, it's been an eye-opener for me, for me, just to see um, our country is big, it's diverse, it's, uh, it's beautiful, and there's so much goodness out there with, among Democrats and Republicans alike, but people want the same thing. Yeah. They want freedom from the chaos that our political class has created um, over these years. Well, from one Buckeye to another, we don't hear enough from middle America. That's right. Nice to see you, Jonathan. Thank you, Bill.